Welcome to a new video in the video series on systems biology, digital twins, and AI. Uh, we are still in block one uh, for TBMT42 and still learning how to formulate models. And in fact, still learning how to formulate reaction-based models. Uh, so this is a continuation of the previous video where we went through the basics of how to do that. Now we look at a special complicating factor, which is the situation where you have a transport reaction and the, 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 the two compartments that you transport between are different. So here we have a transport reaction. So we have A is transported from the big compartment here, maybe the cytosol of the cell, to a smaller compartment, maybe the nucleus of the cell. Uh, so A and C would typically be the same molecule, it's just given different names because it's located in different compartments. Uh, if you want, you can also in such a situation call this one A C, subscript C as A in the cytosol. And this would be called A subscript N for the nucleus. Uh, so that would be the same thing. Uh, but you, you, you have a transport reaction and the compartment that you transport from here, the big cytosol is uh, different, the volume is different um, uh, compared to the, the, the volume of the nucleus here that you transport to. If you have such a component in your um, interaction graph, then you need to watch this video. Uh, then you need to, uh, to, uh, to think about the things that we talk about in this video, which is how to deal with these volume differences, because they will start to appear and some things will be a little bit more complicated. So let's learn how to write up the state space form, the ODEs, in the case where we have this type of transport reactions, where we have volume differences between the two compartments. So um, what will we do? Uh, well, the first thing, is to get an intuitive understanding of the problem. Um, why do we need to deal with this at all? Um, so, um, well, it is, uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, uh, and once we have that intuitive understanding that will lead us to formulate equations, first in amounts, which is the easiest thing to get started, uh, and then we'll see why it's slightly more complicated when you use concentrations. And then we'll turn this a little bit upside down and say that if you have diffusion-driven transport, then it's actually beneficial to use concentrations, at least when describing this transport. Um, uh, and, um, and because of this, and because um, you, you have these different options and they have sort of different pros and cons, and you, maybe you have different options that you use at the same time and you need to convert from one to the other, it's easy to get things wrong. Uh, and therefore we will end by having a couple of um, uh, checks that you can do to see that you did things correctly. Uh, and, um, and this is, uh, uh, this is basically what we'll do in the, um, uh, uh, in the end. So this is important to, to, to do these type of checks. And this is important even if you don't have uh, transport reactions to do some kind of sanity checks to make sure that uh, a thing that should obviously be true is actually true when you look at it, when you somehow double check it. It's an important part of modeling. Okay, so intuitive understanding. Why is this a problem? Uh, here we have a system which only has a transport reaction from a molecule which in volume one is called A, the big volume, and in the small volume, it, the same molecule is called B. Uh, and uh, the thing that happens now is if that you have this situation, then you can no longer treat amounts and concentrations as two interchangeable units to describe uh, the quantity of, of, of a molecule. Because depending on which one you choose, the volumes, V1 and V2 here, will appear at different places in the reactions. Uh, so, intuitively, if we have a transport from A to B, 
as we do here, of four molecules per second, just as to make it as concrete as possible to, to get the intuition in place. The amount appearing and disappearing from the two compartments are the same. So let's have a look here. So we have lots and lots of A's here, and each second, four of these guys will move from this compartment and appear here. So let's look at it again. Four of, four of them here move and appear here. So they were called A here, and now they are called B in the other compartments. Okay, so um, that's why if you count the molecules, if you work with amount, then this is at the start easier. Uh, so uh, this is the corresponding thing said in equation. So we have a reaction going in this direction. So it depends on how much we have in A. Uh, so it's K times A with a minus sign uh, in the differential equation for, uh, for the amount of A and with a plus sign here. And it's the same here. So if this is equal to four at some time point, uh, then it's minus four here and plus four here. So then it's easy. Um, but if you do the same thing, or if you convert these to concentrations, uh, then it's no longer the same. It's no longer the same change here as here. And why is that? Well, it's because this is a much bigger compartment. So as you see here, there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of A's. So say that you have like 10,000 molecules of A in the big volume, because the volume is so big uh, and the concentrations are roughly the same. Um, and you take away four. So you started with 10,000, you take away four, you have basically 10,000 still. So the concentration, which is the amount divided by the volume, will be roughly the same. It will only have changed very, very little. Uh, but here, if you had five from the beginning, one, two, three, four, five, and then you add four, now you have nine, it's almost double. So the concentration, which is the amount that you had here, um, divided by the volume, goes from five to nine, which is almost double. So the concentration here will have almost doubled, even though here it's barely changed. Uh, so therefore the concentrations will be impacted in very different ways if the volumes are very different. So let's uh, do the same thing as we did before uh, in, in um, uh, or let's go from amounts here to concentrations. So basically what we do then is that we, we use the fact that the derivative is a linear operator. So if we want to go to, to, to concentration, we simply divide by the volume. Uh, so the derivative of the concentration of A is the derivative of the amount of A divided by the volume because uh, the concentration of A is equal to the amount divided by the volume. Uh, so the derivative here is minus K times the amount of A divided by V1, because it's the concentration of A that we want to have. Uh, and then if we want to have this fully in, uh, in uh, described only in concentration, so then we want to get rid of this guy, we replace this guy with the concentration times the volume. And then we see here that the V1s cancel out, so it's simply the derivative of A minus K times um, uh, A in the same way as it was up here. So it, it looks like nothing changed. But for B, it will be different. So uh, the time derivative of B is uh, plus K times the amount of A, room, divided by V2, because now we want to have the concentration of B. And that's the source of the difference. So we replace A with uh, the, the amount of A with concentrations times the volume. And we divide it by V2. So these no longer cancel out. These no longer cancel out. And then we have plus K times A divided by V1 divided by V2, which is the volume fraction. So here we see that if V1 is much, much bigger than V2, uh, then uh, V1 divided by V2 will be a very, very big number. Uh, uh, and that means that the time derivative of B will be much bigger, which is exactly what we want. So that's sort of double check that 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 uh, we got this that we got this right. Uh, 
that V1 divided by V2 is a big number. So the time derivative of the concentration of B is much bigger than the time derivative of the concentration of A, even though the time derivative of the amount of A and the time derivative of the amount of B is the same, just with opposite sign. Uh, so this is the basis for why when you have these transport reactions, the volumes appear and you need to keep track of those. And that's the tricky part. Uh, so if you sort of want to keep things easy and you uh, don't have other complicating factors, then working with amounts is the easiest way out because then they don't really appear in the in in the same way. But there is one time when it's better to work with concentrations and it's a common situation. That's when you have diffusion. And if you have bidirectional diffusion, which diffusion is, uh, otherwise it's not diffusion. Um, so you have transport both in this direction and in this direction and it's diffusion. Uh, then it's driven by the concentration gradient. So if the concentration of A and concentration of B is the same, then we will V1 will be equal to V2 by definition. That's that's how diffusion works. Uh, so therefore, uh, you want a constant times the difference, or you want to uh, have the same constant uh, both for A and B. So diffusion depends on the concentration in A and B, or the difference in concentration, with the same kinetic parameter, which is the diffusion rate constants. And if that's not the case, if that is not fulfilled, uh, then it isn't diffusion. So if you want to model diffusion and you're not fulfilling this criteria, you're not modeling diffusion. So you need to make sure if, if what you are assuming uh, is that it's diffusion, then you need to make sure that this property is fulfilled. Otherwise, the model is formulated in the wrong way. Uh, so um, let's formulate the equations for this situation. So now we have V1 here. Uh, which is K1 times the concentration of A, just as just as uh, in the in the previous video. And now we work with concentration. So that means that this guy here now, K1, goes from concentration to uh, the uh, the rate, which is also concentration per second. So this is uh, this is uh, something that scales from, concentration of A to, um, uh, to, to uh, uh, the, the rate V1 going in this direction. And since we know that we want the rate constant to be the same, and it should be the same if we work with concentration, uh, then we can replace this with K1 and just call it KD for diffusion, or, or big D sometimes we call it also. Uh, and in the same way V2, will also be dependent on uh, on the same parameter KD here. Uh, but now it's times the concentration of B. Uh, and then we write up the differential equations. So we have minus KD times A, because it goes in this direction, plus KD times B, because it goes in this direction. And this is the same as minus KD times um, a minus B, so the difference. Uh, so here we see that it actually depends on the difference between the concentration A and B, which is as it should, because it's a diffusion. So this is the rate of the net transport, this entire expression here. So if you want, you can call this minus VD, which is V1 minus V2. Um, or possibly vice versa. Uh, and um, so this is just one net rate. And when we now come to the to, to the to the equation for B, we are in the concentration landscape. So here we we the same the same reaction will impact the concentrations very differently, just as we understood in, in the previous video. So here we need to have this volume ratio. So uh, we still need the volume ratio when entering in either the ADT or the BDT. Uh, so depending on the size of this guy, it will uh, either appear here or, or here. Uh, 
and this is to seem to reflect this basic property, this basic problem that we that we understood on the previous slide, that a small change in A gives a large change in B. So, and this is uh, sort of where I've told you sort of that, okay, so you can do this in different ways. You could formulate this in amounts directly if you want to, uh, but then you need, and but then you need to keep track of that the K1 and the K2, that they will relate to each other in such a way that is the volume difference uh, uh, that, um, so the, 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 the two parameters will be different then. And the ratio between those two parameters will be the ratio between the volumes. Uh, so you can do things in different ways, and therefore it's very, very easy to do things wrong in this, uh, because you have these different options, and there is not sort of one standardized way of doing this. It's very easy, in, and in fact, this is a re-upload, because I did two mistakes when I recorded this video the first time. Uh, so, um, and, uh, and one of the things I could have caught if I had done exactly this thing here, uh, which is... Um, to do a check, uh, is the simulation of the amount of A plus the amount of B constant over time if you removed all other reactions uh, compared to uh, or apart from the transport reaction? So here we only have the transport reaction, so we don't need to remove anything, but we need to check that the amount of A plus the amount of B is constant over time. Because if it's not, we did something wrong. And uh, this is what I did. <laughs> um, it's very, very easy to do wrong, things wrong here. So you need to really double check these type of things. Um, so, um, and this is especially true when you have bigger models and when you have transport between different things and you also have reactions and, and, uh, and so on. So uh, what we need to do, so you can either do this with, with simulations and it's a very good idea to do it with simulations because that's the model you're actually analyzing. So you should always do as many double checks as possible when you have the implemented model that it's actually doing what you think it's doing. Uh, but here we can actually do this with equations as well. So we want to have the time derivative of A plus B and we want it to be zero. So uh, then we do the same thing as we did before. We use the fact that this is a, that the time derivative is a linear operator, so that we can um, uh, we can break out any constant and we can break up any addition. So uh, the dt of the concentration of a plus b is the same, or the amount of a plus the amount of b is the same as the dt for the amount of a plus the dt plus the amount of b. And uh, the dt for the amount of A is the same as V1 times the dt for the concentration of A, which is what we have here. And in the same way, the dt for the, for the amount of B is the same as V2 times time derivative for the concentration of B, because amount of B is V2 times B. So this one simply comes in here and then we have a mount. And this one simply comes in here and then we have a mount. So this is identical. And d dt of A we have here. And d dt of B we have concentration of A and concentration of B we have here. So we can simply take this expression and take this expression and add it in here. So let's do this uh, in, in our heads. It's, it's fairly straightforward. And this is what I should have done when I re recorded this the first time. Uh, so, um, uh, here we have this minus this expression times V1. So this big expression times V1. Uh, and here we have this expression times V2. And here we see that we have divide by V2. So the V2s will cancel out uh, here. So we have this expression times V1. And this expression here within the, within the bracket this is exactly the same as this expression here, which is the net rate, uh, the net diffusion rate, um, just with a minus sign. So this one is equal to this one with a minus sign. And we took this one here times V1, and here we took 
this entire expression times v2, which and v2 is cancelled out. So we have this expression here times v1. So this one times v1 minus this one times v1 equals zero. So it is correct. Uh, so uh, the the time derivative of the amount of a and the time derivative of the amount of b is constant here, as it should be. So uh, so that check is is okay. And then the other check that you can do and uh, and that you should do because if it's not fulfilled then then uh, then uh, something is wrong. So if you start with the same concentration uh, of a and b, and you, again you remove everything else, which we already did here, will the concentration of a and the concentration of b remain constant? So we can also we can do this directly in our heads. So here we can work with the concentration of a and concentration of b, uh, and um, if Concentration of A equal concentration of B. This is simply zero because it's uh, this thing minus itself. And in the same way here, uh, this one minus this one, this will be zero. And uh, this is some 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 number times zero. So this is also zero. So the time derivative of B and the time derivative of A will be zero if, uh, if we use this equation. But again, once you implemented the model, you should double check these type of things. OK. So now we have understood how what the problem is, how to formulate it in different ways, and maybe most importantly, how to do some sanity checks. And you should always look for this type of sanity checks uh, because it's very easy, especially with these type of volumes, to, to do things wrong. Um, and it's human to do, to do mistakes, uh, but what distinguishes sort of a good... Um, a good modeler from from bad one or a good programmer for that matter is that he does double checks double checks he, he introduces checks all the time so the errors that he will do or she will do uh, uh, those are caught so that's the important thing so you should always look for these type of checks and you should always see if they are fulfilled so that was it we are done with dealing with volumes thank you for listening